Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we're going to talk about transcranial alternating current stimulation, which is abbreviated STACS. In our previous introduction videos on EEG and MEG, we discussed how these techniques make recordings of neural oscillations. These oscillations, also colloquially referred to as brain waves, reflect synchronized activity of a group of neurons in a particular region of the brain. Brain waves have different speeds, slow or fast, and these brainwave frequencies have been related to functional outcomes. For example, so-called alpha oscillations have been related to visual attention. So-called beta waves are related to inhibition and cognitive performance. And delta waves are observed during sleep. Now, if we know that these brain waves are important for various functions in the brain, one could argue that making these brain waves stronger will also improve that particular function. That is exactly what TACS attempts to do. Other non-invasive brain stimulation methods, like TDCS and TMS, can be used to increase or decrease brain activity in general, regardless of any brainwave frequency. TACS is a little bit different. It does not try to make neurons fire more or less, but rather it tries to synchronize them, such that your brain waves become more pronounced. This effect is referred to as entrainment. So how does it work? A small alternating current is applied through two or more electrodes on the head. An alternating current reverses direction following a sinusoidal shape. The strength that is used for TACS varies between 1 and 4 mA peak to peak. How much is that? Well, it depends a little bit on how resistant the skin is, but this intensity is usually not much more than that of a block battery. Since the intensity is not that high, participants typically feel only some minor itching sensation. The current travels through the skin and skull to the brain, but only a small amount of the current actually arrives at the brain tissue, since the skin and skull don't easily let currents through. But computer simulations have shown that enough current reaches the brain such that it indeed can have an entraining effect. So what is this entrainment exactly? Well, the idea is that by applying a sinusoidal alternating current to the head, neurons within the brain will adapt to that frequency. For example, when applying a TACS wave at 10 Hz, meaning that there are 10 waves per second, it is hypothesized that neurons in the brain also start firing at this 10 Hz rhythm. In the very simplified example on screen, neuron D does not receive TACS and has a certain firing pattern. However, neuron E is identical to neuron D, but this one does receive TACS. And what we can observe is that the pattern of the neuronal spikes is quite different and that it follows the rhythm of the TACS, which is seen in section F. Now, such computer simulations are nice, but does it work also in reality? Animal studies have indeed shown that firing rates of neurons become more synchronized in the same frequency as the TACS. In humans, it is much more difficult to get direct evidence. EEG or MEG recordings would be the best way to measure brain oscillations, but the signal is contaminated when TACS is applied. However, indirect evidence suggests that TACS indeed can affect brain oscillations also in humans. The next question is, does the potential effect of TACS on brain waves also have consequences for our behavior? Well, there is a large amount of studies that shows that TACS can modulate working memory, learning, motor performance, motor learning, visual attention and many more functions. However, to be fair, there is also a large amount of research papers that do not show a significant effect. This suggests that the effects of TACS on behavior are quite variable. This variability is a consequence of multiple factors. For example, not enough current may reach the brain or not the right area was targeted. Also, many human behaviors are very complex and involve many different interacting brain regions at different points in time. Only applying a single TACS frequency on a select region may therefore not be enough to actually induce a change in behavior. So altogether, it seems that TACS may indeed have the ability to affect brain waves, but the effects on behavior are not always consistent. The good news is, that there is a lot of ongoing research to improve our understanding of how TACS can optimally affect the brain. Now, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If you did, 
consider leaving a like. And we hope to see you the next time. Bye bye!